In the last lesson, we learned how to use Bernoulli's equation for real systems accounting for losses in total pressure head due to friction, viscosity and turbulence. And all of the examples we were looking at in the last lesson were gravity fed systems. But quite often in large hydraulic systems, we don't have enough total pressure head from elevation to drive the system using gravity alone. And when this is the case, we need to add energy to the system. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to incorporate a pump into Bernoulli's equation and calculate how much power we need to supply to the pump to keep the system running for a specific flow. If we imagine a header tank feeding a pipe, we can draw the total energy line for this system using the theory we looked at in lesson 3. We'll have a constant level of total pressure head in the tank equal to the depth of water in the tank. We'll then get a sudden drop in energy due to local losses as the pipe exits the tank. And then as the fluid moves down the pipe, we'll get a continuous loss due to friction, viscosity and turbulence. Because this loss is continuous, it will get larger the longer the pipe. And eventually, however much pressure head we started with, we'll get to the point, after a certain length of pipe, where we run out of energy. At this point, the system will no longer be able to run as designed. In my tank pipe system, we've seen quite a few flows in these videos where the elevation of water in the header tank has allowed the flow to be driven by gravity alone. But if I reduce the water level in the header tank, we eventually get to the point where we run out of pressure as we move down the pipe. And at this point, the discharge will drop and drop until eventually there's little or no flow in the system. In the last video, we also looked at an example of a real world gravity driven system. The Elan Aqueduct takes water from the Elan Valley Reservoir in Mid Wales to Birmingham through a 117 km long pipe, driven by gravity alone. But this system is quite unique and only works because the Elan Valley happens to be 50 metres above Birmingham in elevation. There are many examples of reservoirs where there is not sufficient elevation difference from the reservoir to the destination point for the system to run under gravity alone. An example of a system like this is Shustoke Reservoir in Warwickshire. Shustoke Reservoir was constructed in the 1870s and is another great example of Victorian engineering. The reservoir was originally built to supply Birmingham with drinking water, but as Birmingham grew and the demand for clean drinking water increased, it was replaced by the larger Elan Valley Reservoir that we looked at in the last video. The reservoir was then used to supply drinking water to Coventry and Leighton and Eton and the surrounding areas in North Warwickshire. But despite the fact that Coventry is only 15 kilometres from the reservoir, a relatively small distance compared to the 117 kilometres that water travels by gravity alone from the Elan Valley Reservoir to Birmingham, the big difference in this system is there is no great difference in elevation between Shustoke and Coventry. In fact, parts of Coventry are several metres in elevation above Shustoke. The fact that the destination where we're sending water from this reservoir is potentially above the water surface of the reservoir tells us definitively that this system cannot run on gravity alone, as even an ideal system with no losses can't lift water above the water surface of the feeding reservoir at the system's outlet if the system's outlet is open to atmosphere.
But the solution to this problem is to use a pump. A pump is a hydraulic system that will convert mechanical energy into pressure head inside a pipe. And this will raise the total pressure head downstream of the pump. And this is how the system at Shustoke Reservoir is able to send water to parts of Coventry that are above the elevation of the reservoir. Right next to the reservoir is a pumping station and this pumping station will send water from the reservoir to its final destination. The original pumping station, also built in the 1800s, was originally steam powered with several large steam engines driving the pumps. The building is still standing today, although it is in a state of disrepair and is no longer used for pumping. These days the system runs using a series of electronic pumps located on the same premises as the old building. When designing a pump system, there are two main things we need to work out as the designer. Firstly, how much total pressure head do we need the pump to add to the system? This will tell us what size of pump we need. Secondly, how much power do we need to supply to the pump to give the required total pressure head? This will tell us how much energy we need to supply to the pump and how much energy the system is going to use whilst running. So let's have a go at working through an example. Let's consider what pump we would need to send water from Shustoke Reservoir to Coventry. Just a note for this example, I haven't easily been able to find accurate parameters for all parts of this system. So this is a representative example, and not all of the figures will necessarily be exactly the correct numbers used in the real system. Let's say we're pumping water from Shustoke Reservoir to a point in Coventry. Shustoke Reservoir is approximately 79 metres above sea level and the city centre in Coventry is approximately 96 metres above sea level. So we're talking about an increase in elevation of over 15 metres from the water surface of the reservoir to central Coventry. Let's say the pipe we're using to send water from the reservoir to Coventry is 1.5 metres in diameter and 15 kilometres long and we need the system to discharge at 1 meter cube per second to give us the drinking water we need in Coventry. All the pump is really doing is adding total pressure head to the system, so we can quite easily represent this in Bernoulli's equation by adding a pressure head term to the first half of the equation. The total pressure head that the pump is going to add to our flow is represented in this plus delta H. So let's apply our new version of Bernoulli's equation between the water surface of Shustoke Reservoir and an outlet pipe in Coventry. So point number one is the water surface of the reservoir. And point number two is where the water is discharging. The system needs to operate at one meter cube per second and the pipe diameter is 1.5 meters. This gives us a mean velocity in the system of 0.57 meters per second. The elevation of the water surface of the reservoir is 79 meters above sea level and the elevation of the outlet pipe is 96 meters above sea level. The pipe is 15 kilometers long which is 15,000 metres, and a reasonable estimate of the friction factor in the system, obtained using a Moody diagram, is F equals 0.013. So we can start by finding which terms we can cancel in Bernoulli's equation. There is elevation at the water surface of the reservoir, but we can cancel the pressure head, as the water surface of the reservoir is the atmospheric pressure 
we're assuming atmospheric pressure is zero. We can also cancel the velocity head at the water surface of the reservoir, as we can assume the water surface of the reservoir has negligible velocity compared to the outlet pipe. Because in this system the outlet at point 2 is above the system's datum, we can't cancel the elevation at point 2 like we've been able to for previous examples. But we can cancel the pressure term as the pipe is discharged into atmosphere and we're assuming atmospheric pressure is zero. So we end up with elevation at 1 minus the total losses in the system plus the total pressure head added by the pump equals elevation at 2 plus velocity head at 2. So to find out how much total pressure head the pump needs to add to the system, we can simply rearrange for delta H. As this is a relatively big system, local losses will probably be insignificant compared to continuous losses. So we can neglect local losses and just account for continuous losses due to friction, viscosity and turbulence. At this point we have an equation where we know all of the terms. We know the elevations, we know the velocity, we know the friction factor, we know the pipe length and we know the pipe diameter. So to work out how much total pressure head the pump needs to add to the system, we can just plug these numbers in. Giving a final answer of 19.1 metres. So the pump needs to give 19.1 metres of total pressure head to the system. This additional 19.1 metres of total pressure head will give the system enough energy to lift water to point 2 at the required discharge and also overcome any losses in the system. The final thing we need to do is work out how much power, in terms of electrical power, we'll need to supply to this pump to keep this system running. To do this we can use something called the pumping equation. This equation will tell us how much power a pump requires to operate at a given discharge and total pressure head added or delta H. This power is equal to the fluid's density times by gravity times by the discharge the system is running at times by the total pressure head delta H the pump is adding to the flow. This equation will give us the actual power that the pump is requiring to add to the flow. But in reality, we're going to get losses inside the pump, so we're actually going to have to supply more power to the pump than is needed for the flow. So actually we need to account for the efficiency of the pump. So the power that we need to supply to the pump is the actual power the pump needs to add to the flow, divided by an efficiency term, which accounts for the efficiency of the pump. So if we now apply this equation to our system, we know what the discharge is and we know how much total pressure head the pump is adding to the system. So we've got all the terms for this equation. So we can see that our pump is providing 187,371 watts of power to the flow. But as the pump is not 100% efficient, we know that we'll need to supply more power to the pump than the pump is providing to the flow. Let's say the pump is 80% efficient. This tells us that we'll need to supply 234.2 kilowatts to the pump to keep the system working. By providing this power to the pump, the pump is able to keep the system flowing at a discharge of 1 meter cube per second and add a total pressure head to the flow of 19.1 meters.
Just have a think about all of the equations we've used to arrive at this number and think if you were designing this system, how could you alter the system so it still delivered the same discharge but used less power than the way we've designed it at the moment? So in this video, we've looked at how to incorporate a pump into Bernoulli's equation for examples where we don't have enough total pressure head from gravity to drive the system. We've solved an example to work out how much pressure head a pump needs to add to a system to keep it operating, and we've then used a pumping equation to show how much power that pump would need to operate. In the next video we're going to look at the opposite case, where we have an excess of total pressure head in our flow, and we're going to extract that using a turbine and convert it into electronic energy.